We already know that Majora's Mask has some interesting glitches. Some of them are well known and some of them aren't. But even the popular ones that the public seems to know everything of have some interesting yet rather unknown effects. Among these popular ones there's the fourth day glitch, probably the most popular glitch there is in Majora's Mask. It's easy to execute, removes the timer and way more. Today we'd like to show you the fourth day glitch for those who haven't heard of the glitch yet, some theory behind it and another yet not so popular but more useful day. Day Zero Let's start with a glitch called Fourth Day. I will get on the name of the glitch later. The Fourth Day is a glitch originally found years ago by using the telescope in the observatory and cancelling out of the scope a very short amount of time before the moon's about to crash. This cancels the moon falling cutscene, the game advances past the third day and the in-game timer gets lost. If we now go outside the moon seems to be gone. Taking a closer look, we see that the moon is not literally gone, it's still there. Just very, very far away. If you now enter Clock Town, you will also notice that the building in South Clock Town is gone, as its size or model depends on the day you're in. Trying to play the Song of Double Time locks the game up, cause the game doesn't really know what to do. But let's tear this a little more apart, shall we? First off, there are other pretty unknown techniques to start the fourth day, such as finishing the beaver race before the moon crashes, finishing the boat ride before the moon crashes, or playing Song of Double Time close to the old man in the observatory on night of the second day. This last trick with the Song of Double Time is way easier than all the other methods, by the way. Now we are on the fourth day. Or is it the first day? While it technically only makes sense that the day number 4 comes after day number 3, the game might consider this as the actual first day. Why? Well, originally Majora's Mask was supposed to have 7 days. This concept was scratched early on, yet it has some leftovers in the game. After advancing over the last day, the game has no place to put the moon to, so it goes back to the default state, which puts the moon far away very far away. So it might be that the first, second and third day of the released game were supposed to be days number 5, 6 and 7, at least when it comes to the distance of the moon. We will get back to this later. The fourth day never got any day transitions, so the game still assumes it's just late third day. However, the in-game time is still running, but if you wait long enough you will get an actual day transition. When the game tries to advance the day, it tries to grab the next picture in its list to announce the day. However, that one says Dawn of the New Day, the message that's supposed to show after you've completed the game. Same goes for languages on the European version. If you choose a language, activate the fourth day glitch and save at an owl statue, the game will not display it as day 4. So, if you have your in-game language set to English, for example, go to the fourth day and save at an owl statue, the game will show you that you are on the first day... in German. Also, there is a night transition on fourth day, as the time and day still move on, just without text. By the way, if you try to talk to the mass salesman, the remaining time will be displayed in letters instead of numbers. If you wait long enough, the mass salesman will just say only, take a break and then cancel the text box resulting in you not being able to talk to him anymore. If you now leave the clock tower, the game crashes entirely. Now let's get back to the actual day theory. So some of you might think, oh the moon is just so far up because of the intro and the credits, there's no way this could possibly be the first day. Well, I have to disappoint you here. Neither in the intro nor the credits is there any moon to be seen. Even if you use a wrong warp glitch to get into the credits map, the moon is gone entirely. But there's another point that leads us to assume that the position the moon is at on the fourth day is actually meant to be the first day in a seven day cycle. A glitch called the zeroth day will help us out here. Zero the day sets the game back to the day before the first day at 5.59 am and freezes the in-game time. Whenever you play Song of Time or Song of Double Time, the game sets the in-game time to one second before either the first or the next transition. Saving at a technically unreachable owl makes Link spawn at the mayor's residence 
as that is the default place to put Link to when the game doesn't know where to put him. Now, playing Song of Time will revert to day one. If you reset here, the alt state is saved, the reason for saving overwritten. This leads to us having an owl save active that used Song of Time. Now you only need to fall out of bounds while playing Song of Time, so when you bring up the text box manually, the cutscene won't play, because cutscenes can only play while the ocarina is out. And since we're walking around with the text box up, there is no way for the game to play this cutscene. This confuses the game as you are still supposed to be at an owl statue, but yet you aren't and the game reverts the time temporarily to zeroth day. Ah, we're finally here. Looking at the moon shows that it's even further away than it is on the first day. So there in fact was a set position to the moon before the actual first day. If it wasn't set, there should have been a default state and it should just go up like it did on the fourth day. But it didn't. Another piece of evidence to this being a non-intended day is the platform in South Clock Town. It's gone. Just like on the fourth day. So here we are, the zeroth day. But what else could we do? Well, there are a few things you can do. If you start zeroth day, wait a little, then switch transformation masks, the game will assume you are still in your old form, cause that was the state you had before saying yes to the song of time. Your B button will go blank and gives you the sword in any form. Now, you can do things such as become in first deity anywhere or use your bow as a deku. Your sword as a deku also has the same strength as the gilded sword by the way. Another effect? If you visit the wrench at night of the first day and wait for the aliens to arrive, you can store the song of time and hit yes when the aliens spawn. This will set the time forward first to 5.59am and then revert the day as you are still in a cutscene. The result is that you are now back to day one but the aliens are defeated and you didn't even need a bow. Even if you would now make them spawn again and take the cows, the roof wouldn't disappear and Romani would be there the next day as usual. There are more minor effects to this glitch such as duping a Zora egg, collecting the razor blade on the first day and other things like that. But sadly enough, we'll have to end it here. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to click on the annotations on the screen right now if you want to watch more, for example, Ocarina of Time glitches or casual vs speedrun episodes. And why not subscribe, then you won't miss a thing.